welcome to Rusty Jug. And it's my turn for the lucky dip. It's just been four, this is the fourth of four lucky dips. We've had uh, the Predator, the Witches of Eastwick, and Full Metal Jacket. So I thought I would <clears throat> turn add it up to, to 11. Add to the diversity, yeah. Yes, and uh, introduce a rockumentary. So we'd be looking at the 1984 film, uh, This is Spinal Tap, directed by Rob Reiner, starring Michael McKean, Christopher Guest, Harry Shearer, and others. Enjoy this rather long trailer. Through two decades, 17 classic albums, countless unforgettable concert triumphs, they changed the face of British rock music forever. And the best part is, they're back. Now, they're on the verge of the greatest comeback of all time. Rock and roll! No sleep left! This is their moment. Go right straight through this door here, down the hall. Yeah. Turn right. Their time has come. Rock and roll! Any minute now. Any second. Hello, stage! I think we're lost. There's a little job there, about 30 no. feet. Job to the left. Get ready. Get oh, set. I hope your metal's deep. You can get stuff out of it. My name is Marty DeBerge. I'm a filmmaker. One man dares to probe the hidden secrets. I was just pointing at it. I... Well, don't point. Even don't even point. point. No, it can't be played. Never. I mean, can I look at it? Up? One man dares to hear the shocking answers. It's tragic, really. He exploded on stage. To questions like, is the world really ready for spinal tap? You put a greased, naked woman yes. on all fours yes. with a dog collar with around dog her collar. neck and a leash. And a leash. And pushing a black glove in her face to sniff it. You don't find that offensive? No, you don't, don't. find that sexist? Yes, well, you should Listen have seen the cover they wanted to do. After years of vicious gossip, the official explanation was he choked on vomit. Well, I can't prove whose vomit it was. Years of ugly rumors. It's a passion thing. This is a fact. And you are Spinal Tarp? Oh, what's going on here? Hi. Now, the vicious, ugly truth can be told. Well, I'm sure I'd feel much worse if I weren't under such heavy sedation. into America! From the place where eardrums go to die come the living legends of rock and roll lunacy. This is Spinal Tap. You know, it's like Hemingway said, you know, remember them as they were and write them off. Yeah, I think you're right. There was a... That's quite long. That's too long. That's like the whole film long. It doesn't even have all the best bits in. No, it has a lot of them. There aren't that many. <sighs> oh, boy. I know. I told you. I did warn you. <laughs> I did warn you. Uh, but anyway, well... Um, well, <laughs> why, why, why don't we end that particular, particular mystery then? Amanda, yes. <laughs> what did you think of this is Spinal Tap? Uh, well, okay. I didn't make any notes. None. I, the, I mean, in none. my notepad, I got the title, how long it was. I didn't even get the certificate rating because it because we had it on DVD. Um. Uh, yeah, that's as much as I wrote. Well. Uh, dare, dare I ask for a score? I'm gonna, I, I want to give it just one. Go away, fly. I want to give it one, but I won't. I'll, I'll be generous and give it another one. So it, it gets a two. <laughs> wow. I just did not find it funny. It, did, it didn't entertain me. I've seen it before. I know what the film's about. I've seen it before. 
I didn't find it funny then, and I still don't. I gave it a second shot. I still don't find it I didn't it know funny. you'd watched it. Yeah, I've watched it before. Oh. Well, uh, they, have this, they have this thing where, you know, if there's dead air on radio station for 30 <laughs> seconds, it, kick, it kicks into the national anthem or something, or, or it just plays something. Um, we better do that because there's be a lot of stunned, stunned I think, places. I think you either, it's a Marmite, you either yeah. love it or you don't. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised. I knew this had happened. This, this would give us the <laughs> widest range of scores in pod history. It was, it, it was inevitable, so... Wow! Sorry, yeah. Amanda. If you didn't like it, you didn't like it. You got to tell I, it like it is. I don't. Go if we didn't it, take it. No, it'd really screw with the average. Then I think I don't know. I imagine yeah. it's a cult classic, but it just didn't. No, no, don't don't feel. imagine it's a cult classic. Sorry, it is a cult oh, classic. You know. Don't have to imagine. This is her revenge for Witches of Eastwick. No, no it this, isn't. Yeah. I even thought about that this morning. I was like, oh crumbs what my what score am I going to give it oh they'll think I'm doing it just because of the witches of Eastwick I'm not at all I yeah, just yeah yeah, yeah. we get it we film. understand it it's fine okay we get I was it. bored I was bored I just wanted to get up and not watch not so watch the, the telltale sign from yesterday should have been 20 minutes from the end knowing it was 20 minutes from the end she decides to get up and make and go to the toilet and make a cup of tea and read her phone in the kitchen. I didn't read my phone. I well, actually were... snaffled some crisps out the cupboard. Right, so well, I was yeah. still I was still watching the telly because I could see the telly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh. well, I don't know where to go next because I'm hoping that either of you are going to lighten lighten my mood on this. So, um, Dom. Right. Well, I did enjoy it. Um, you know, I found myself smiling along with. Um, well, throughout the film, I think. And there are some really good, fun scenes in it that are memorable from when I first watched it when I watched it this time. I think Stonehenge and the tragic backstory of the drummers uh, are amongst my personal <laughs> yeah. favourites. <clears throat> and the cast do a great job, especially when you learn that it's kind of mostly improvised as they as they did the film. But it's hard to score, I think, because are you scoring it for what it was at the time, which is like a really creative, original, breakthrough film? Or are you judging it through today's eyes and how it stands the test of time and I think that the further we move away from the era that it's satirizing the kind of more familiar we are with rock, you know spoof mock documentaries and mock documentaries and things the less impactful it is through no fault of the, the film itself so all in all I've scored it a 6.5 what 6.5 oh my god 6.5 I'll get my coat she's gonna hate my score Joe yeah you better hold on to your knickers Amanda Wait until you hear my score. That's presuming I've got any on. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Bombshell after bombshell. Oh, no, it's it's nice. just a, this podcast may be cut short. So oh, was was two out of ten, was that your lowest score ever on this podcast? Ever. Uh, yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah ever. since we started scoring, yeah. I am going to give my highest score ever a nine out of ten. What? I, oh, my God. Joe, this movie Joe. is... Almost perfect, I would say. <laughs> oh, Joe, is yes. it a guy thing? Yes. Well, I don't know. You know, it's well, the whole thing is they have such a great chemistry, and you feel that they're real. I mean, for a while, I thought that it was a real documentary, and I was like, I never heard of these guys before. But then I noticed Michael McKeon, who is a comedian, and I was like, well, this can't be real. And and also, uh, what's his name? Harry Shearer. No, uh, the, Rob Reiner, you know, Reiner, yeah. he was famous too. So, he, he, you know, uh, I guess that those were the most famous ones there. But anyway, I think they have really good chemistry. And I think it's, it's, it's good because it's, it's kind of like what happens to bands that you've seen. You've heard lots of horror stories that have happened between bands on the road, you know, behind stage, backstage passes, and then how they break up, how girls get in the way. And uh, I thought it was really nice. I mean, especially when you they go all the way back to the beginning and you see how they formed and how uh, Nigel and David had this relationship and then the girl got in between them. And, you know, and then, you know, Derek is just along for the ride. He just <laughs> doesn't bother anybody. He's just happy being him and doing whatever he wants. I, I Again, I think it's a great rockumentary, mockumentary. Um and uh, yeah, I give it a nine out of ten. And the have music you seen is... it before, Joe? 
Yeah, I've seen it multiple times. Um, it's, I don't know if it's, it's definitely up there as one of my favorite comedies. But yeah, like I was saying, I think the music is really good too. And I was listening to it recently. Um, I'm watching it again. They they wrote the music and they performed they did, the yeah. music, and they did a good job. I mean, I would have, I actually was tempted it like years ago to buy the album because I thought the music was was pretty decent. Wow. Anyway, that's wow. that's my score. Wow. On your oh, island, here we go. On then. your nine out of ten island, Joe, make room for another for another occupant. Um, it's nine out of ten. It's there's very nine. few films. There's few films. Dom, I'm going to mention something that your podcast you and I did in a moment. There's very few films that when I when I when you're trying to tell somebody about it, and if they know it, if they if they get it, they go, they can finish the line for you, or, or they can do that. If they don't know it, you're telling them, and then you're 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 laughing at the end of telling them something, so then they find it funny, and you like. It's a very few films that do that, that I can describe something and actually make myself laugh every time I, I try and think about it. Um, one of the things that, that worked from, and I don't know if this is a strange film to bring in, Dom, but when we talked about Naked Gun, the reason why that's funny is because they play, it's always, it's played straight. It's, it's never, he's, he's never in on the joke. He's, he's doing this. And so you're finding the things that are going on around it funny. That's why this works, because when they're saying all these lines, which, you know, are funny, they're hilarious, some of them. When they're saying these lines, they're doing it such a deadpan way that they don't think they're being funny. And that's what makes it funny. And I just think it's just so cleverly done. Um, I I hope somebody's got some trivia on, on, you know, you know, the motivation for making this film because that's something that that i haven't got because i tell you when i put in trivia i usually go to imdb and then cross check it with some other sources it there's just too many it's just it just went on it was just on and on and then you just go i just have to select some i think we'll probably get to some of that as we talk about the film not plot as it plot as it was but yeah it's just it's what i thought it was it's what i remember um, and I'm glad I picked it, even though it's now the worst score. So that means you liked Howard the Duck better than you liked. You'd watch Howard the Duck again instead of this. Over that, yeah. Oh, look um, at that. Oh. I thought you were going to give it 11 out of 10. Ah, <laughs> ah, very, good. Ching. very good, very good. Well, blimey. Um, well, should we, do ro- should we do roll call? Shall I go? <laughs> yeah, no, just leave it to it. <laughs> Wow. Well, well okay. The, the most interesting pods are the ones where there's disagreement, Amanda. So um no, looking forward to hearing your Yeah, but if they you see the thing is if people are gonna listen to this, they'll be like, Oh, this is Spinal Tap, yeah, great film, and then they'll listen to the podcast, and then there's me moaning on about how unfunny it is, and then like, No, but it might be replicated. Woman. This might be replicated. You might I, I don't know if you're right. I won't be sexist enough to say it's a it's a it's a guy thing. I just think it's maybe Maybe this podcast will be our most popular one because people will go, oh, yeah, listen to this. She thinks it's rubbish as well. You know, so who oh, knows? I don't know. I don't think so. I think maybe it's the style of comedy because I don't like things like Airplane or Naked Gun either. But I don't, this don't isn't find that. them funny. But no, I know, that. but... It, well, I was going to ask you that. You do find them funny, Charles. So yes. like, yes. Yeah, because Charlie oh. kind of hit the nail on the head like when he said that the reason why it's funny is because they play it mostly seriously. And when he did bring up airplane and the naked gun, I was wondering if Amanda liked those too. I don't. If, and that's probably why you don't like this. And one. I don't like police Academy either. Oh, I tell you. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's understandable. It was love at first sight. <laughs> Amanda, what, just out of interest, what would you say your favorite comedy is then? Oh. If I had to put you on the spot, you know, you think- mine. Well, you said lots of types of famous comedies you don't like. So, you know, what what do you like? Let's try Ooh, and get your a question, baseline. There's Dom. Uh, well, I don't know about films. Um, I like um, things like The Fast Show. <laughs> right, okay. Well, that's interesting because that's a slightly surreal 
type of humour, I would say, in the fast show. Very quick league of gentlemen. You're like, League of Gentlemen. Who? League of Gentlemen. Oh, League of Gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, that as well. That's a little bit out there. Um, Lost. Yeah, they're British sort of comedy things. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just don't like that whole kind of genre of airplane and stuff. It just doesn't float my boat. We can't all be the same anyway, can we? Oh, no. no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all, we all need a variety of opinions. So, it's uh, like The Office, either the original British or the American remake. The original yeah. Office, yeah. Brilliant. Well, yeah. There's some, some parallels, the mockumentary style, yeah. the ensemble cast. Um, yeah. I, I, I can't join the dots on your maybe I comedy just, journey. Maybe. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> Don't call it out for inconsistency. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just I didn't connect with the characters in Spinal Tap. As being English, what did you guys think of their accents? Good. Yeah. Good. Not 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 forced, just just good. I mean, Christopher Guest is kind of half British, at least, anyway, isn't he? I think. So, but it, it, yeah, but uh, no, the, the accents were, were great. I, I bet there are a bunch of people who must have watched this not realizing it was a spoof, you know, thinking it was an actual band. And I bet there was an even greater proportion of people who actually thought they were British actors when they, when they saw it. Oh, Ozzy Osbourne thought they were real. Yeah. If that's your benchmark for, for insightful, yeah. uh, astute <laughs> observation, then. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Rethink that one. Right. Okay. Right, go on then. Roll call. Let's do that. Right, okay. Let's do roll call. Well, this light makes me look like some sort of horror movie. But uh yeah, the, the other light's broken. So if you're watching, if you're listening, don't worry about it. If you're watching on YouTube, then uh happy days. We've got another channel for, which has quite a lot of views. Anyway, um let's not do that. Let's do roll call. Here it is. Roll call. Roll call. So, roll call. Um, we will have to start with the director, I think, uh, Rob Reiner. Um, so, uh, Sleepless in Seattle. If you, if you, I know I started with one of his first famous ones. Look at where he went from this. He went the sure thing to Stand By Me. I know, Dom, that's your, one of your, if not your fa- fav- favourite movie. I like Stand By Me. It is. It's great. I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't like Stand By Me. I mean, I know we didn't give it the highest mark. In fact, I don't think we, I don't were, think we marks. were scoring then. No, what would you give it, Stand By Me? Oh, definitely at least an eight. See. It's in my, in my top ten list uh, of all time films. Yeah, so that, that's how, that's the pedestal yeah. I put it upon. Just so. River Phoenix's performance, like when good. he's talking to, um, oh, what's the other lad's name? Will Wheaton. Uh, Is it Corey? Wheaton? Is it Feldman? Yeah, Corey, he's speaking to Corey, isn't he? And he, they were down by that sort of like That's the right, yeah. area. Yeah. And he just pulls his heart out and he's just like, oh my God, that's just amazing. Yeah. Well, obviously it had an effect. I remember knowing how to shotgun a beer from the sure thing. Take a, <laughs> take a biro, put it in and lift it up and pull it, pull it in the air. Life yeah. skills, hey, babe. Life skills, what? they are. And they did, yeah. they, I, I, was, uh, <laughs> I, I was popular for a moment when I said, I know how to shotgun a beer. Um, people were like, do what to a beer? Me and, well, we don't me, have that me, me and my mate started smoking off the back of Stand By Me, so it did have a, a negative <laughs> effect on about 20 years of my life as well. But uh, yeah. Excellent. How old were you then, then, Dov? Yeah, not immediately, but I think I started smoking, at least stealing cigarettes off my dad when I was pretty young, 14, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think everybody <laughs> tries it around that time, don't they? Yeah, I was yeah. late, 16. Anyways. Yeah, I was out socially in the pubs at 14 smoking having one oh, half oh. a lager and black joe, joe have you got any rob reiner related um influences at a young age well the only thing i could say about rob reiner that i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with he was mostly famous in the united states in this sitcom called all in the family uh, did you get that over there no no nope, no nope. it was archie bunker it was a comedy uh where Archie was kind of like uh, like a racist and um, Rob Reiner was married to his daughter and they called him Meathead. And it was it was so popular. It was like one of the most popular shows ever in um, 
American TV history. It's actually Archie Bunker's chair is in the Smithsonian Institute. Like if you go to Washington, D.C., you can see uh, like Fonzie's jacket, oh. which again, I don't know if you guys, did you get Happy Days? Oh, oh yeah, God, yeah. yeah. Loved Happy okay. Days. Yeah. Yay. I think Dom told me originally what jumping the shark meant and it came from Happy Days. Yeah, yeah, but um, did you say All in the Family? That, that's the yes. that's the show was in. Yeah, that's the American version of um, Till Death Us Do Part. The you know which ah, uh, right Alf Garnet. Yeah, I was just about to say it sounds a bit like Alf Garnet. That's wow. how funny is that? I can wow. only, yeah, I, I can only presume the American racist, version wasn't was. He? Yeah, but properly racist, I think. You properly, know, yeah, yeah, Words yeah. that wouldn't be allowed on television these days. Oh, yeah. God, no. Yeah, no way this would not be allowed on TV. So, oh, my God, are there were parallels then? <laughs> yeah, I'll send you a video. You guys can check it out. It's, you had a uh, sitcom in the States where the neighbour was Hitler. Eh? Yeah, no, it was a sitcom where there was a Jewish couple and and this guy moved in next door and Hitler didn't commit suicide and he moved in next door. And it was Hitler. In the United States? In the United States. I promise what was you. It called? I promise you faithfully. Dom, if you're on the if you're on the case, I, I, I'm not sure what, what you'll get if you type in Hitler sitcom. But <laughs> you're not on a work laptop or anything. <laughs> a couple, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. There is there is oh, yeah. um well Heil Honey I'm home, apparently. <laughs> uh, oh, is that what it was called? I'd never heard of it. Is that for real? <clears throat> but it says here it was British. Hi, Honey, I'm Home is a British sitcom written by Jeff Atkinson, produced in 1990, which was cancelled after one episode. It centers on Adolf Hitler and Ava Braun, who live next door to a German couple, Arnie and Rosa Goldenstein. Oh my God. What episode? I'm surprised it lasted. I'm surprised it got that far. So it's to click on the YouTube links now, but we've got a pod to record, haven't we? All oh, right, okay. Well, yeah, we'll all go and watch the um, cancelled uh, Hitler sitcom. <laughs> Hi, old honey, I'm home. I think it deserves an award just for that. Uh, just for That's that. a sun headline, isn't it? That's a, uh, yeah. 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 Freddie Star ate my hamster. Um, <laughs> go and look that up, everyone, and especially for our listeners in Germany. We've got listeners in Germany and Asia, a lot in the US. Please go and look that up. And I'm sorry that I said that the US created that. It was obviously one of ours. It's obviously going to be us. Um, Don't deflect that one. Yeah. Back to Rob Reiner, Princess Bride, um, Misery, A Few Good Men. Um, American president when Harry met Sally, it's a pretty good roster, really, isn't it? They've done quite a good lot then. But misery, we glossed over. I mean, I know we talked about a few good men the other week, but misery is an absolute belting film. Uh, maybe not top ten territory, but that's you know, I'd, I'd sit down and watch I've that film seen, any time. I've not seen that one. Oh, well, I, I you know have to what see happens. That one. You have to see that. Yeah, I think, yeah. you'd, I think you'd really it, enjoy it. it. It's um suspenseful tour. You know, it does contain violence, but it's not a violent. No. film but so when it when it does when it does become violent it really hits home even more it's just exceptional again in a based on a stephen king novel like a lot of things we've talked about recently as well mm. well, well worth it mm. doesn't she hammer his ankles or something yeah ho- that's, that's, that's one of the most famous scenes hobbling it's called yeah well, apparently from yeah i know i have to look away when i watch it but yeah yeah so for rob reiner he was also are you going to say this who he was married to no no go go for it he was married to Penny Marshall. Do you know who she is? Oh, uh, and she was a director. She directed yeah. a, a League of Their a League of Their Own and Big, uh, right? And and she actually was uh, on Happy Days. She was Laverne. Did you ever hear of Laverne and Shirley? Laverne and Shirley. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna make it. So yeah, she was uh, Laverne. Okay. And oh. and Rob Reiner was married to her for for a pretty long time, actually. Wow. <laughs> How funny. Okay. I'm sure we'll come back to you know, the genius because obviously he stars in this film as well. Um, let's go over to David St. Hubbins, uh, Michael McKean. Um, Which one was that one in the movie? Uh, okay, we'll make it easy for you. Long Blonde Hair, the lead singer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Um, thoughts, everyone? I mean, before I go into like what he was in, what what was what's everyone else got? Well, well the, each one of these that we're going to discuss, so the, the director and the three main leads have mm. been in something not just that I like, that I absolutely love, that was really important to me growing up. We've already done Stand By Me. This one's much more obscure, but um, he was uh, in a film called Clue, which is 
was Joe mm. Walker, a test the American version of Cluedo. Um, yeah. And, uh, and that is such an underrated gem. If anybody Tim, asks me... Tim Curry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're all nodding, so you've seen... But normally when I mention it, people look blankly, and um, it's, it's so funny. Uh, I remember watching it for the first time. I don't often remember... You know, people ask you where you saw a film for the first time. 99% of the time, I can't remember, but I watched Clue late at night in my bedroom when I was supposed to be sleeping and I just remember laughing my head off laughing out loud all the way through it and uh, I've, I've since watched it with my children who also love it so yeah the fact he was in Clue um yeah he's always got a special place in my heart because of that and it had four different endings yeah yeah true. <laughs> so like when you saw it in the theaters in the United States you everybody got a different ending depending on which theater they were in really yeah oh well, that's yeah. That's pretty if you, cool. If you watch on TV, they show you all the different endings, don't they? But yeah, if you're in the cinema, you only got one, and it was that. Mm. that oh, right. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, but yeah. That's, well, that's an absolute underrated classic of a, of a film, I think. They should do something like that again to they encourage should. people to go to the cinema then. Well, we should do it. Rust, rusted junk, you know, that's sort of, if you're talking about obscure 80s films, um, maybe not really, really obscure, but pretty obscure, I think. And, uh, and obviously, I've now shown my hands, so I'll let you. Well, I need to, next, me, next week, I, we haven't got, I mean, I know we had some ideas about films of the 80s and stuff. We need to actually record some stuff next week because uh, we'll be in hot, sunny climbs for two weeks after that. So uh, we need to put a thinking caps on. And I need to, like, get something in place, whatever that is. But I will. Well, look, seeing as I've hogged the, uh, the, the, <laughs> hogged the mic already with um, with Michael McKean, he was also in Better Call Saul. Um which is you know, See, much, I don't more, watch that. much more recent, but ah, oh, you're missing out. I think. Did you watch Breaking Bad? I didn't oh, I like did. it. Didn't like it. Didn't like, well, okay. Yeah, well, I did. I was disappointed at the end. Of, of what Breaking Bad? Yeah. Oh, okay. I felt Fair a bit enough. deflated with the ending, and then yeah. I watched the the spin-off movie, and that was a hit and miss. And then... I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the movie, but the um, I thought I. Personally, I really enjoyed Breaking Bad, but I thought Better Call Saul was you know, different. Yeah, I've started watching that. I'm probably halfway through it, but really, really good. Yeah. See, more recently, he's in a show that we've been watching. Do you know Breeders, the one about the the couple with the two kids? Um. Yeah. The, yeah, he was in season two of that. He played a, he played his dad. Did he? Sorry, he played the one's dad. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, see, this is what this is watching TV, man. It's like, oh, really? The guy that I've just watched in this was in the thing that I just watched like a few months ago. <laughs> All right. Anyway, he's the police officer in Planes, Trains and Automobiles that pulls him over and says, is this car roadworthy? Is um, he? He is. Uh, he's also the bad guy in the Brady Bunch movie. And I do like the Brady Bunch movie. I may be one of the f- very few people, but I really enjoyed it. I even enjoyed the sequel. He was also in Dream On. I love that with Brian Benbin. That was a great series in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, Saturday Night Live, all of them have been together again in Best in Show, A Mighty Wind. Um, and probably for the younger audience that we've got, he's the guy that invented uh, Mocklet in Friends that talks to Monica and says he's coming up with all these things. So, yeah, he's the Mocklet guy. You, you maybe slightly skipped over that, but the they were in, you know, the, the four leads were in multiple films. Yeah, together. Yeah. It was a real kind of ensemble cast, wasn't it? Which, um, you know... We saw a bit of last week when we did the Arnie uh, thing with Jesse Ventura and um, Action mm. Jackson, but this this lot take it to the next the next level of you know uh, collaboration, I think, and and probably points to that kind of improvisation that they do as well. I guess if you can find a group who can act and work together in that style, then that's why you know why they do it so much. Yeah, absolutely. Which moves us on to um, Christopher. I, got, Guest. I have I have one last oh. one though. So he was mostly famous in the United States for Laverne and Shirley. Oh, was he, he played, in that? Okay. Yeah, he I played Lenny, Lenny and Squiggy. Do you uh, do you oh, remember okay. Laverne and Shirley? I, I I remember watching it, but I don't remember too much. Perfect Strangers. Ask me any question, but Laverne and Shirley, no. No, but they were the standout comedians in that Lenny and Squiggy. They were a bunch of greasers that would always like break into Laverne and Shirley's apartment. Like they lived in the same apartment complex, and they were really really funny. Okay. Um, but that's what like. Anytime I would see him in Best in Show or if I saw him in in this movie, I just automatically thought of Lenny. You know, okay. that's how popular he was. Wow. All right. Um, well, moving on to Christopher Guest. I don't have much for him apart from he was also in Saturday Night Live and Michael McKean was. 
He was in Which the Princess. Was he in the movie? Uh, Nigel Tufnell, turn it up to 11. This goes to 11. The guitar man. Yeah. Don't touch this that guitar. That left. Don't point at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, he was in Pri- The Princess Bride. Uh, he played the, um, the 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 henchman to the uh, to the prince. Um, yeah, the six fingers. Six fingers. That's right. Uh, and a few good men. He was in a few good men as well, as well as in Best in Show, Mighty Wind, For Your Consideration, all the other films that they all did together. He was. He's also married to. You know, he's married to. No, you see, you've got all the, uh, this. Is Joe? I I do because um, oh. I don't like to, Amanda, I know this happens probably too often for your liking this pod, reducing women to objects, but Jamie Lee Curtis, ever since I saw Trading Places at an impressionable age, has always had a very, very special place <laughs> in my heart. And so Christopher Guest, to be honest, has, had, has done well in my eyes, having such a successful career, because frankly, I don't know how he gets out of bed in the morning, because if I was married to Jamie Lee Curtis, I don't think I would be able to. So yeah, I was, um, yeah, I was aware of that fact. I've now gone down seven notches in uh, Amanda's estimation. Oh, but all views have, on this podcast. There's, that, no, there's no cancelling the, on this podcast, okay? The That's one why where, all views are... The one with uh, Arnie, is that True Lies? Oh, yeah. yeah, she was good in True Lies. She looked great in True yeah. Lies. Very fit in True Lies. But it was actually quite interesting because she did a, um, an article in a, a women's magazine, didn't she, about the truth and reality of ageing. Uh, and basically, you know, did a, a, a then and now... Um, and said, you know, this is how a body ages and, you know, mm. it's natural and don't be ashamed of ageing and stuff. So uh, big up for Jamie Lee Curtis, well, I, I would say. And, and for the Halloween films, of which um, we are going to get in October, Halloween Ends, uh, which is just going to, all it's going to do is finish off that particular trilogy until they start another one. Because um, uh, Michael Myers can't die, obviously. I think we've established that by now. Um, Harry Shearer. So, Dom, um, I know that you've got a list of voices that he... <laughs> I know that you will have made it. A list of the voices that he provides in The Simpsons. Yeah, what, what a legend, you know. If, yeah. if, um, Stand By Me and Jamie Lee Curtis played uh, prominent roles in my formative years, then The Simpsons absolutely did, as Charles will attest. Uh, yes, absolutely. Back in the day, boot, bootleg copies of The Simpsons that were probably <laughs> used to record for me and then I'd bring down to, to Nottingham. Um, yes, he did Mr Burns, Wayland Smithers. Principal Skinner, Ned Flanders, Reverend Lovejoy, Kent Brockman, uh, that they were his main ones. Um, you know, what what a what a talented voice actor he is and oh, how much God. pleasure has he brought me over the years. Now, admittedly, the Simpsons went massively off the boil, you know, what take your pick really post season 13, I would say, perhaps, and I don't watch it anymore, but there's some, you know, he's contributed to the best comedy ever written, I think. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, absolutely. Um, some of the best lines. A, a they all have. Lines. They all have. Yeah. And Spinal so. Tap was on The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a crossover. Yeah, they did a Spinal Tap episode where they all regrouped, didn't they, and uh, voiced themselves. <laughs> and I think uh, they were in their tour bus and uh, Home would drive past them and push them off the cliff and they all died. <laughs> right. it's, it's an episode that fe- heavily features Otto, who I think is the kind of target audience for Spinal Tap, really. You, yeah. you can see him in a Spinal Tap gig. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, he's also... Uh, Again, I, I hate to reduce it to this, but if I've mentioned Mocklet Guy, then he's also in Friends, uh, tries to buy Ross's monkey um, and said, you know, I'll put him in a fight against her. I'll start him in a fight against a pig. And Anyway, um, he's also in The Truman Show and he plays Handsome Dan in Wayne's World too. Do you remember that? Yeah. They thought, yeah, they were going to meet Handsome Dan and they, they meet his assistant, think it's him, and then he's all got boils on his face and he's quite ugly. I, th- I um, think um, I think Harry. Sh- I know we're not reviewing the film properly yet, but when he appears on screen with his uh, hairy chest and his leathers and his mutton chops, he just looks so funny. Isn't he? He's, he's, just, like, he's, he's every time he just wanders onto screen or pun- tries to be intelligent and offer a thought, he just looks so <laughs> so ridiculous. He's, he's he's brilliantly cast in this. And film. the pipe, somebody must have some trivia where the pipe came from. Does anybody have that? No, no, I know, th- and and I know the majority of the film was improvised, but my goodness. A pipe, especially that pipe. It's just, oh, it's just great. Um, anyway, we must move on. We're all cool. Um, Ed Begley Jr. Oh, he was also no. in Godzilla. Oh, God, yeah. We don't talk about that, Joe. We try to forget about that. <laughs> Even though Matthew Broderick was in it as well. It is dreadful. It is 
truly dreadful. Although not as bad, and I need to add this very quickly, not as bad as the worst film I've seen in the last five years. Jurassic Park, whatever it is, Dominion. Jurassic that is, Park, that Jurassic is Park true. Diminishing Returns. Yeah. Yeah, d- diminishing Returns. I can't, I can't watch it. Is I that just, the latest one? Yeah, I can't watch it. Oh. It, it's a cash grab. It's the worst kind of cash grab. It's it's just shoving people in for no coherent story. But anyway, there you go. Um, Ed Begley Jr. Uh, sent elsewhere and um, took the Steve Martin character in Parenthood, the, se- the series. Let's move on. <laughs> Bruno Kirby, the um, limousine driver. Well, he's had a he's had a nicer. He, he's 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 kind of like met the stars, you know, yeah. with all the films that he's been in. Uh, so you've got When Harry Met Sally, uh, City Slickers, Jack Pallet, Good Morning Vietnam, Robin Williams, Donnie Brasco, Al Pacino. You know, um, there was another one, but I didn't write it down where he was in with De Niro. Uh, Godfather Part Two. Oh, he's in. Right. Okay. Yeah, I should have remembered that one. And um, yeah, actually, I saw it. It was weird on YouTube. They had him doing an interview. And he had met Elvis and he told uh, his Elvis story, like uh, how he'd met him. But I always liked him. I liked his voice. It kind of seemed like he was Joe Pesci before Joe Pesci was Joe Pesci. Yes. Yeah. I was just thinking (laughs) that. Yeah. Uh, And he died, I'd say fairly young. In 2006, he died. Yeah. 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 Um, Let's move on on this one. Fran Drescher. Uh, Bobby uh, Bobby Fleckman, the uh, uh, what she's was she PR she was she the record exec or the PR I, I keep forgetting. The uh, one that, I think the a one combination had, of both had the album launch party. Yeah. Um, oh, that voice. Yeah, she was in the nanny, beautician and the beast, and she voiced in Hotel Transylvania. Let's move on, unless you've got anything else. Yeah, but. Let's talk about the other bit players. For those at home, I just put that in inverted commas. Bit players. Dana Carvey as the mime from Wayne's World. <laughs> Garth from Wayne's World playing the mime alongside Billy Crystal. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We have Paul Schaefer. He wasn't plays... in it for long, though, was he? He wasn't in it for long, about no. About four seconds. Paul Schaefer, who was, um, uh, is it David Letterman's? Yeah. Uh, David Letterman's band leader. Uh, or musical, you know, accompaniment. Um, Artie, Arti, um, I keep, I keep saying it's Furkin, but it's not. It's, it's, um, it's Buffkin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Angelica Houston, Fred Willard, and I'm just like crikey, you could do a podcast just on those. You could do a roll call just on those names. But yeah, Billy Crystal just popping up, and you're like, okay, all right. Why is That's he in fine. it though? Why not? Was well, this like was a, they amazing. weren't famous at that point. No, you know they. It was very early in their careers, really. Do you think he was mates with one of them and said, "Ah, oh, can I just join in?" I think that was a Saturday Night Live connection, wasn't it? Uh, that would have people like Billy Crystal rocking up because um, they were collaborating. Yeah, they, but they. I don't think they were on Saturday Night Live at that point. You know, Dana Carvey and Billy Crystal. It, it was very early in their careers. He was on soap in the seventies, Billy Crystal. But oh, soap, um, soap is amazing. But they probably hung out in the same circles. So mm. they, I think they were just very well connected, weren't they? Particularly um, Rob Reiner and Christopher Guest seem to know a lot of people in those circles. Mm. Mm. Anyway, that's real uh, cool. Howard that's Hessman. Right. Howard, yeah, it's all right. Head of the class, Howard Hessman. Yeah. Um, uh, I keep meaning to, to to do a spin-off podcast about 80s TV shows, but I've got to watch them before I can actually sit and uh, discuss them. That would help. Um, although I'm I'm working my way through Miami Vice, um, which is still brilliant. Anyway, back to the film. So, look, this what let's just have an open discussion about an open discussion about the film and what we and points that we raise and things that we like. Because otherwise, it could turn into a with nail and I. We could just start quoting each other and start just doing one liners after another. I, th- I think the genius. I, I think I said what, what I said at the start. The genius of this film is, it's it's purely when you know that most of it is improvised. If you're going to improvise things like that, 
you must have a real you must have an innate talent in order to bring it out and not only that but the person that's next to you has to be able to react to what you just said that that i think takes some skill which is why i i think this is you know i think there's you and me joe on on nine out of ten um you know and and i think we we all well we all apart from amanda recognize that that's 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 a genius but um you know you've got all the fa- you've got all the famous lines you've got you know uh, what's it called lit my love pump you've got turn up to 11 all those sorts of things but i think it's it's a lot more than that when you put in when you when you look at the the, the, the tiny little throwaway comments it's just it's just fantastic I, I, I missed I missed the nuance of of the of the album label being black. I, I, I missed the whole beauty of the fact that their album cover was just a black mirror. Um, and I I, I YouTubed it. It's the final thing I'll say, and I'll, I'll I'll open it up to everyone else. I YouTubed the meeting Metallica, um, backstage at Glastonbury, um, and th- they're basically saying. Yeah, you ripped off our album. Um, you know, you ripped off the concept for our album. And Metallica are just in awe. They're just, you know, they're, they're in the presence of Spinal Tap, and they're just laughing along with it all. And he said, do you know what? I think the album I think the album was missing one thing. We should have just put Metallica on the front of it. And he said, and then it would have sold a lot more copies. So um, if we re-release it, are you okay with us doing that? And I'm just thinking, it's just it's great. So good. Anyway, there's my little opener. They actually had that in the United States where they were banning albums in like places like Walmart, like department stores. So I do that remember was... that well, this Tipper Gore, it was Al Gore's wife, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a big deal at, at that point. So it definitely hit home like when I had first seen that because uh, I forget what albums they were banning. But, you know, when they said like the original cover had some girl on a chain and she was sniffing a glove and all that and that they had to change it. Um I think it was more topical at that point, you know, when we first saw it. Now it's like... You should see what cover they wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's like now, you. I mean, you can put whatever you want on a cover, you know, and they're fine with it. If we're talking about reviewing films, I think you touched on it there, Joe. So it was more topical then is is a comment you can make throughout this. You know, I don't want to... I didn't score this film a two. I did did enjoy it. But um, I just wonder how much you, your assessment and your enjoyment of it is a little bit through rose-tinted specs. I guess that's at you and Char- Charlie. Um, because, you know, it's an old film now, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's nearly 40 years old as we move away from that era of rock. Does, is it is it relevant? Sometimes when I sit down and watch these films ahead of these pods, I, I watch it with my daughter, like you know, Predator and Die Hard, and that's really fun. But I knew she wouldn't like this uh, this film. I, I knew she wouldn't get it, so I didn't, I didn't bother. Um do you well, all these films that we review are old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but this, yeah, that's sorry, and that helps me. Yeah, so I suppose what I meant is it, this one felt like it dated more. I think um, sometimes it's just the effects that have dated, but the plot and the character. This one I, I felt was a little bit more dated. You know, soft rock, stadium tours of those sorts of bands in America. It's not really <clears throat> not really a thing anymore, is it? I, I think uh, what it was for me is I was in a band. I mean, not that I was like them, but, you know, it was just you kind of like a band? garage band. Yeah, yeah see, I, see, I knew this, and I was waiting for him to say it on the podcast. Tell us more. Come yeah, on, tell us more. I used to play a guitar. You know, we are pretty decent. Um, but so, like, I appreciated it a lot more, especially knowing about guitars and, like, all the drama that goes <laughs> behind, like, writing songs and, you know, the guitar player having a problem with the keyboard player and people cheating with other girlfriends in the band uh, you know it, it it is kind of funny and i was a huge fan of the beatles too back then and it just really kind of was more of a mockumentary of them i would say um especially with introducing his girlfriend was kind of like yoko kind of getting in between the band members and i always felt like harry shear's character was like ringo where he just was more laid back than the rest of them. He just wanted to be by himself. You know, he had the long mustache and, you know, he was just happy and just stayed out of the drama. But yeah, I, I, I think it helped that I was really into music back then. Um, and I, I guess people, especially if you're looking at it now, it's probably a little more difficult because 
that music hardly exists anymore. It's more like rap and Taylor Swift and whoever else is like Beyonce, the, the flavor of the week. It's just one long mixtape at the moment, Joe, of, mm. of, of stuff. <laughs> Oh, aren't we all? No, no, no. Well, no. Uh, yeah, no, well said about it, because that's what I used to think. But my, my eldest now is 14 and started to get me back into music. You know, like a lot of people, I listen, used to love music, listen to it, and then got into my 20s, sort of locked onto the same things, listened to them for the best part of a decade and a half. And now I'm starting to find new music via her, and I really enjoy that, actually. Um, I've even, this is how old I am. I've even got a playlist on Spotify called Good modern music. So that's, oh. that, that, that's how uncool I am. Oh, but yeah, mate. right, fine. Share, share it with me. I, I mean, I, I, I love doing do like good that. modern music. That must be, but that's today's music, right? Well, yeah, that, I think I'm about to rename it to something that makes me sound less of a, well, I won't use the word, or we'll get an explicit rating, less of a, less of a silly <laughs> Billy. So, uh, yeah, good, <laughs> de- decent, today's decent tunes. You could just call it down with the kids, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah something like that. Now you're talking. Yeah. So what, what sort of genre then, Dom, are you kind of exploring? Well, what Charlie would call mixtape. So um, I'll try, what did I add tonight? In fact, let me... Um, <clears throat> yeah, please, please do. Bear with me. Uh, I Yeah, here we go. So it is um, in real time, decent modern... Heat waves, glass animals, you know. I know everybody else discovered this a long time ago. Uh nope. The weekend, heard, heard um, yeah, oh, weekend. I like yeah. the weekend. Meet me at our spot. The anxiety. Uh, I've even got Harry Styles on here. So there, there if you want to kick me off the spot, not on my watch. Now. Yeah, make me feel good. Uh, where are you now? One kiss. Ah, oh, that's um. Yeah. yeah, I like Julie Leaper. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, there Man- you go. See, Mandy, and a- yeah. Mandy and Amy went to see Julie Leaper a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah she was amazing. Yeah. 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 Up in Manchester. <laughs> Fast forward 12 months, we'll be doing a, uh, a Naughty's podcast, yeah, music. <laughs> Decent oh, we modern can, we music. Can, we can go music, anywhere. We, we can go anywhere. I went, I went and saw Dua Lipa when she first came out. I was at the Birmingham NEC shaking my booty to her yeah. stuff. Hmm. I can't attest, yeah. I can't, 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 yeah. can't confirm that. But I first you album, I was there. So we've all done a little bit of an opener. Why did you not like this film? Why did you, what, what, is it just nothing hit? I suppose on reflection, the comedy was funny, but maybe I just wasn't in the mood for it. I don't like soft rock anyway. Uh, what? I don't really. Okay. It's not my I thing. Wouldn't, I wouldn't hey. call that soft rock. No, no. I used to play Guitar Hero. I used to sit there and, and choose stuff yeah, on there. all here. right. Only because I had to. Some stuff's all right. What? Uh, you've, but... just, you've just taken away a piece of my a, a happy chunk of my life. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, it was amazing, babes. You were yeah, right, yeah. on fire on Guitar <laughs> I was, I was, Hero. By the way, I was extremely good at Guitar Hero, and I won a competition at oh, a no festival way. once. Yeah, because uh, I've, I've got the highest score on Freebird. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, I, used yes. to I only know Freebird from Guitar Hero. <laughs> and the same with, oh, what, what's the, um, the women oh. band? The Go-Go's? No. They were just L- in L7? Black. No. Joan Jett and the Black Arts? No, not them. The Bangles? No. Oh, God, right, okay. <laughs> Lana <laughs> Rama? We could go on all that. <laughs> yeah, we could, yeah. No, they were in the 70s. Oh, so it's not, oh, the, Ren- uh, it's not the Reynolds girls. <laughs> it wasn't um, Supremes. No, they were rock. Guitaring. Oh, Heart? Heart, that's it, yes. Right. Yes, so Heart. What did they do on Guitar Hero? Oh, uh... So we had a we had a low, barracuda. Barracuda, yeah, there yeah. you go. I know that from Guitar Hero. Oh, such a good song. The, you know, exposure to different things. You know, it's fine. Yeah, and clearly, until she corrected herself, she hated every moment of it. But anyway, <laughs> there we go. Fine. I'm going to dust it off. I'm going to dust it off. I'm going to put it back on the Xbox, and we're going to do it all over again, just for you. Oh, thank you. It's fine. I think I downloaded some uh, some new hits on it last time I fired it up, which is about new two hits. years ago. Ooh, yes. ooh. Wow. Bought the Kiss pack. So ooh. there's loads of Kiss in there. Okay. Again, anyway, not, we're, getting, we're, getting, we're getting slightly off the... Okay, so why didn't I yes. like it? I yeah. guess I felt it was trying too hard. Oof. Really? Sorry. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. I just didn't... 
engage. Do you not think any of the like leads them. were? Did you not like the, the, the introduction of Janine as like the Yoko Ono of the band that eventually? No, not really. No. No. Okay. Just didn't float my boat. Sorry. That's all right. I, I think a, a lot of problems with these movies that are reviewed is that if you didn't see them back in the day and you see them now, it, it's a lot different. Uh, I've like, seen it before. You Did you see it when it first came out? Mm, oh, no, she was, she was eight. No, she was eight. No, she was ten. She was ten. I saw it, right? Uh, Christmas. Caravan Park. I don't know. I'm going to go for we, a long shot. We'd moved up to the house that Dad built. And so we moved up there in 82. So uh, I was eight so when was the film 84 84 how long did it take back in those days for a film to appear on the telly it was about four years wasn't it about two three years yeah yeah so eight nine. not what you would put on after the I might have been about 12 or 13 then and it was on one christmas during the day on... did you, you didn't like it then i didn't know what it was i thought it was actually about a proper band so I watched it and I thought their job here is done. They're a bit mental. <laughs> I think I thought they were is... simple and yeah, I just didn't. I watched it from start to finish, but I didn't really engage with it then. So I guess I gave it a second shot and it still didn't do anything. Well, this is considered a cult classic, and I think what cult classics is that it's not that it's a small amount of people that like it, but it's not as as big as like people that have seen like Star Wars or E.T. and that it's all beloved, but there's a specific group of people that love this movie or relate to this movie and they just think it's great. There are a ton of cult classic movies like it, but it is also, I guess, alienating for some people like yourself, you know, like if, uh, like I said, I, I was in a band, so I, I appreciate it a lot more, but mm. if, if you had no connection whatsoever to it, I can understand you not liking it. Mm. So I think so far we've been talking about the context of the film and, you know, I think different views, people who've lived and breathed it and appreciate it on that level, people it leaves them cold. And for me, it feels a bit distant from, from being relevant anymore. But whatever your view is on that, I think, well, Amanda, perhaps you would disagree, but there are some absolute classic lines in here and scenes, which I think are rightly remembered. One of my personal favourites, which is slightly more obscure jokes, is the is the, the death of the drummers, which is, you know, running joke all the way through the film. And it's, it's funny, but it, that was my first laugh out loud moment was when they were talking about what happened to the first one. And uh, he was killed in a bizarre gardening accident, which is obviously amusing enough. But then there was the line, author the authority said it's one of those where it's best not to solve it. No, they leave it, they leave not, it hanging there. Not solved. Yeah. And, and the, mind, the mind just boggles. And, and then it's closely followed up with the second one who choked on vomit. It's, 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 someone else's vomit. Someone else. Yeah you can't dust for vomit and, and just the, the kind of absurdity and the surreal uh, humor there really, really appealed to me. But that, that line just had me in stitches the first time what authority said, and that was best not to solve it. Yeah. Fantastic. And you've got all the other things, which is, you know, from a trivia point of view, when they talk about, you know, apparently they got the inspiration for, was it Van Halen that wanted their M&Ms separated? Yeah. That was their back. That was their, so when it comes to the bread, the tiny bread, the bread's oh, too... Oh, the sandwich. Yeah, exactly, the, the sandwich. The way that that's played is perfect because it's it's genuine. There's no knowing. It, in his world, this is a problem for him, the tiny bread. And it's just, well, you know that you can, you know that you can fold. You can fold the ham. Yeah, but it just breaks, though. But it's, well, then it just doesn't work. And you're like, oh, it's just... Just little things. You're right. Uh, uh, leading up to a to a to you know. I do well, like the Shre I do like the addition of the Shrewsbury Town. Uh, I'd have to say, growing up in Shropshire, Shrewsbury Town um, football shirt, which apparently <laughs> wasn't picked for any reason. Because I went back home to Shropshire last sat last weekend, and I was in the car with with the, the guys we used to go to see Shrewsbury Town with, and I went, "Do you know the reason for this? For this, we are aware that the Shrewsbury Town t shirt, Shrewsbury Town football shirt." in the film we don't know why and apparently just like the color <laughs> yeah that's what i heard too yeah i i had heard recently that kiss had a spinal tap moment where they were uh touring and they were in austria uh austria 
And I think that they had like their, their kiss logo and their symbols and they were painted with the Australian flag, but they were performing in Austria. (laughs) But isn't it great that that enters the, enters the the vernacular. It's like, that's a, it's a spinal tap moment. Yeah. It's a moment. I mean, this, I mean, the, the Stonehenge scene was recorded as a, as a, I think we probably would all looked up the same trivia on this was, re- was recorded way before the film because it's recorded as a, as a pilot, as a, as an idea of what, what, what do you think about this? So that whole segment works up, works on its own, but the bit just before of trying to find the way you were actually making a cup of tea, Amanda, you got up at this point and I wasn't seeing it, but they were, when they're trying to make their way to the, to the stage, Again, that's oh, just, then they keep ending up back at the same guy going, how do we, how, yeah, you just go up there, you turn right. When you turn right, you go, and it's just, again, it's just, yeah. That was in the trailer. Well, everything was in the trailer. Yeah, that was <laughs> the majority of it. trailer, yeah. Having said that, I may go back, and, oh, I don't think I can now. I don't think I can go back and change the trailer to a shorter one because then much of the things that we talk about in this were, well, when we refer to the trailer, the long trailer. So it'll jog people's memories if they've not seen the film for a while. Right, absolutely. You've got the you've got the Stonehenge scene, and you've got the turn up to eleven scene, which maybe we'll get onto, and, and they are they are classics. But there's just lots of other funny moments interwoven as well. The <clears throat> excuse me, the taxi driver that we talked about earlier. I thought that section was great when he tries to engage him in conversation about Sinatra, and he's going on, and they just. <laughs> Put the window up and he spins on a dive and suddenly it's these thing limeys. Limeys, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a fad, it's a fad, and he just goes off on this rant. I thought that was uh, very well done. Um <laughs> and then the when they're at the air force, much later in the film, when they're at the air force base, and there's obviously been a hideous um issue with the booking, <laughs> completely inappropriate for the audience. And uh and they've got the confusion over the 24 hour clock. It's 1930, you're on stage at 20 hundred hours. <laughs> So we've got about 50 hours. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, very, very amusing. And it's laughing. See, she's going to say she's chuckling <laughs> at all these things. And yet she says, I'm struggling. I was going to give it a one. I'm Go chuckling on. because you, you lot find it funny. And that amuses <laughs> oh, okay. me. All right, okay. Okay. And I, I'm in, enjoying you. Can you not add another point on for our, enjoying for our it. enjoyment? No. All right. Okay. Two and a half. I gave it two. Right. It makes it sound like I like, oh, should be thankful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Um, do we like the uh, addition of Janine? I think she was a good character. They were all natural. That's the whole thing yeah. that yeah, I appreciated yeah. about this movie is that they really, it could have been a real documentary. Yeah. I, d- yeah. I, did, yeah. I did read that her addition. Sorry if this is nicking someone's trivia. No, no, no. They're, they're, I think we're going to mix, blend it in yeah. anyway. So, yeah. That was it. The the studio wanted her character putting in to give it some semblance of plot, so it wasn't just kind of a a random series of events, you know. Uh, and so she was she was brought in to kind of drive the the plot forward a little bit, which you know, in, in it, unusual for for a studio, I thought was probably a good idea and did did help the film. Hmm. And it is good to have a you know a, a, an actress in it as well, so it's not all just men. I thought she I thought she carried it off well. I thought she held her own against the um the other actors and, and improvised well. <laughs> I like when she was drawing uh, the characters that like she wanted to make them like kiss. <laughs> I've got a, a factoid if we're mixing up facts. Yeah, we're mixing it up. We're mixing it up a bit. I was intrigued by the navy cap, okay, that Marty was wearing. The navy ship insignia was USS or- Oral Sea. And I'm like, they can't have named a ship Oral Sea. So I Googled it and apparently um, he wanted to wear the hat that, that read USS Coral Sea. He was told he'd have to get permission from the Navy to wow. wear it in okay. the film. So to avoid it, the producer, Karen Murphy, altered the lettering. So the blue cat read USS Oral Sea <laughs> OV-48. <laughs> is Oral Sea a note or something? I mean, is that some sort of musical reference? No, she just right. amended it. So, so it being coral, it, the C was then connected up to be another O. <laughs> I think that's like kind of like a dental term in a way too. Oral C, right? There might have been a toothpaste back then. Oh, we only got, we didn't go as far as that. We only got oral B. Yeah, okay. 
Oh, I had to, somebody had to make it. I that it was well one Yeah, thank you. Um, what are the other... Uh, he said that um, IMDb um, is the only film that... It's got eight out, eight out of 11. So it, it's the only <laughs> film on IMDb that's got a score out of 11, which right. I just think is great. But the Rotten Tomatoes score was 92% for the critics, 95% for the fans. So... Mm. Yeah, me and Joe, we're in good company, my friend. But the IMDb score, I think, was 7.9 or something, wasn't it? Was, it? It's rad it up to eight. <laughs> Why not? Um, I, I know that um, t- Time Out basically said uh, in 2011, Time Out London named uh, this Spinal Tap the best comedy of all time, noting that it's sublimely funny and sharp, a comedy built for the long haul, which matures with each viewing. Uh-huh. I feel that's true. Maybe I need to watch it more then. Oh, I, don't I think would you disagree. Could, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you could do that again. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, you know, you know I, I mean, regular listeners to, to the podcast, and we all know, but for those that are just joined and just joining for Spinal Tap, um, Ma- Amanda and I don't talk after we watch the film, so we don't know. We don't, know we what don't talk about are. the movie. We, do we don't talk, talk about the movie, but there are times when the huffing and the puffing and the moving in the seat and the urge to look at our phone uh, sometimes just tells me everything that I need to know. So uh, uh, genuinely, that if hasn't I had, happened that often. If I had to, if I had to say what Amanda's score would have been, I would have said it's four. Oh, so I wasn't that far point, off. Man. I wasn't that far off. I, I, I think I've seen this like about twenty times. And Thank you. Yeah, and and I enjoy it. it. Like, there's never a point when I'm watching it where I'm like, I'm going to fast forward through this scene. Yeah. It's I want to watch it from beginning to end and I enjoy it thoroughly throughout. Oh, that's really cool though. Well, well mm. so if I was going to fast forward through any of the film, I think it'd be the songs. What do, what do people think about the actual <gasps> The songs are great. <laughs> for, for me, that was the you know the least interesting part of the film. When so I'm going to rock here, Big Bottom. It's all there. Yeah, I was so tempted to buy the album. You know, like for so, for so long, I'm like, should I buy this? Is there actually an album? There's, oh, a, yeah. there's, there's three, possibly four. I think there might be four. There's um, "Break Like the Wind" um, was the last one. I think that was 2008. So yeah, they did make they did make I, albums oh, after that. I give them a lot of credit though, because again, there were a lot of people that really did like this movie, and a lot of Hollywood did too. They never did a sequel, like a, a real sequel. And most people would have done a sequel. And I, I think that's what helped makes it a cult classic too. I, part of me would have loved to have seen them back together and seen what happened to them after this movie. But I, I think sometimes it's best to leave things alone. Hmm. Well, Joe, I'm going to upset you. If you go to IMDb and you click on it in pre-production, it's, this is Spinal Tap 2. I don't know. I, I think no, that's I been never pre- know. I never know if that's just appeared. Yeah, I think been that's there been there for a long time, and I, I don't think it's really true. They could still, they could, but why would you? Mind you, they made Jaws too, so you know. I just, yeah, I just think if the, if the Rolling Stones can tour at eighty years old, then <laughs> may, maybe there is maybe there is scope for some further parody and uh, satire there. Um, I might be interested in revisiting them. You know, one okay. of men personally. Oh, you're not allowed to. Not with your score. You're not allowed into it. It's just me and Joe going. <laughs> it wasn't a bad score. It's not like well, it was that, a two. Without well, labouring no, the true. point, my, my score <laughs> suffered because it, you know I felt it wasn't as relevant. Obviously, if they were to update it and to do a spinal tap, oh, two, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, voting yeah. I know this is this is the point where Joe loses confidence in me, but yeah, I'm voting yes for spinal tap two. Tom, you can have my two. Wow. There you go. That brings, yeah, up. That brings it up to an eight and a half. Yeah, well, I'm liking the I'm liking the averages. It's definitely um, in 2002. Uh, it was selected for preservation by the National Film Registry because it's a film that's considered culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant by the Library of Congress. Yeah, check that out. Um, uh, what, what what's everyone else got? Because I I mean I do like the um, Ozzy Osbourne. Was among the audience. He says it was among the audience members who assumed the band was real. When he learned the truth, he admitted he should have known better because he said that seems quite tame compared to what we got to. 
which <laughs> is what it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Rob Reiner was almost one of the members of the band. Okay. And uh, Harry Shearer said he didn't look good in spandex. <laughs> so he ended up directing the movie. <laughs> so who would have directed it if he want, did look good in spandex? You know, I, I don't know. This I, is where I, you're going to be like, really? It's like, oh, Francis Ford Coppola <laughs> directing there. Well, I think that that wasn't that was what's his name is like a mockery of because it's Ma- Marty DeBerg. So Marty is Martin Scorsese. Scorsese. And then D is, uh, 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 who is it? Oh, I can't think of it. But, you know, like all the famous directors back then. Right. Right. Coppola. De Palma. Right, De Palma. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steel, Spielberg. Berg. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That that works. Um, yeah. Um, what's anyone else got? Seeing as we've now morphed it into, into trivia. I'm I'm doing much of you. Yeah, I was um I was jet lagged and uh flying home this weekend, so I'm I'm not, not got my usual pages of notes, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, this I noticed uh for like the first time because like, I have a pretty big TV now. When they're playing that song Big Bottom, they're all playing bass. <laughs> <laughs> Are they? Yeah, because it's like uh I'm like, well, I knew like Harry Shearer played the bass player. Yeah. So, you know, you could tell when someone's playing a bass, it's got four, four knobs, four strings, you know. But then I noticed that, uh, you know, Christopher Guest and Michael McKean, they also had basses because I was like, is that four strings? That should be six strings. I'm like, holy crap, they're all playing bass, <laughs> you know. <laughs> See, something only a musician would know, would realize. Um, I do have two others. Uh, they had a hundred, they had a hundred hours of footage to mm-hmm. choose from. Uh, they said Ryan managed to edit the film's original theatrical release down to 82 minutes, but fans of the film have actively sought out the unedited footage. In 1998, and I do remember this, the Criteria Collection released its only single-layer double-sided disc that included more than an hour of additional footage. It's now out of print, but if you want to buy it, it's currently on Amazon for $250. Um, but the Holy Grail of alternate editions is a four-and-a-half-hour bootleg edition and apparently I'm looking at the link now and bootleg edition is in is in inverted commas. So hmm, I might have to go and have a look for that. You're not buying that. No, 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 no. I might go and have to have a look to see if I can find it <laughs> on, online. Um, they mentioned in the movie, um, the Isle of, well, you, you know, like a lot of bands have played at the Isle of Wright in England. Oh, the Isle of Wight. Well, oh, it's white. Um, yeah, like I know the Who, and I think you yeah. two might have played there. So they mentioned that they played at the Isle of Lucy, which is <laughs> basically a, a take on I Love Lucy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. They did play the pyramid stage. They, I've forgotten who they warmed up for now. I've forgotten who they, they were before, but they, they, it wasn't like the first act. It wasn't like trying to get them out of the way. Uh, when did they play? I think it was tw- I think it was around the time that they were touring, which was two thousand and nine. So they did a they did a tour. Um, I've got to make an admission: I had tickets to see them, and I never went. Um, because oh man, I, I can't believe that. I know we don't talk about that, but it was, it was at Wembley. It was at Wembley Arena, not the stadium, but it's Wembley Arena, and I never went. And I and, to, and I I always I re, I regret I don't have many regrets, but that's definitely one of them. Anyway, I, I remember they were touring over here. You know, it was a joke. Uh, they were on David Letterman, and I guess there was it was the connection with uh, Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer, yeah. And like they were being interviewed as the band, and they were talking about how they were coming out of retirement and they were touring, but it was all like a little spoof and all that. But I, I specifically remember seeing that interview and then being on David Letterman and then playing a couple of songs. But I just I had no interest in seeing them at the time. Um, but it would have been cool to see them if they were yeah. closer. I, I think I would have seen them. Yeah, well, I'll kick myself, but there we go. So did you work out? Did you actually work out the average, Joe? Do we have an average? Not that we introduce an averages into. 
into this because we, we 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 will have just me and Amanda block the time and everybody coming in and out for season six. Well, I don't know. I, I, Amanda's Let's just say brings seven. it down pretty. What? Six, six and a half. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't add it up, but uh, right. yeah, it's, it's you know probably about a seven, I would say. Okay. Uh, average is six point six two five. Recurring. Okay. We'll round it up. <laughs> Not recurring. Not recurring. Yeah. <laughs> Spinal Tap played Glastonbury two thousand nine. Right, so you had time they were touring then, yeah. And Jarvis Cocker and Jamie Cullum joined them on stage to play. Uh, Jarvis, Co- Jamie Cullum, good yeah. lord, that king king of the mediocre. Oh, I'm sure he just, I don't know, was he played one of the dwarfs when they recreated Stonehenge? They had, or something? They had two dwarves on as well. Yeah, but I'm sure, I, 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 I think I've got it somewhere. Uh, I will have it's to look at my, my yeah. archives. Is there, is there a film of it on YouTube? Is that they've got a lot of lot of it on YouTube. Yeah, okay, then, then, five, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a quick look at that when I come down. I know you're oh. going to have to. All right, okay, I'll look at it tomorrow. Anyway, they said right. that uh, Oasis uh, had seen Spinal Tap live, and uh, the three stars opened up, up, up for them as uh, themselves as as the characters from uh, A Mighty Wind, the Volksman. <laughs> the Volksman, yeah. And uh, so Liam uh, was bored, and he said he didn't like the folk music. And then uh, Noel explained to him. He says those are the same guys, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the Spinal Tap. They're kind of goofing on us. They did that at some concerts, didn't they? They opened up with that, and people were like, "What the hell's this?" and booing them and everything, and not get these. This is them. <laughs> this is. <laughs> but uh, oh, that's good, right? Anyway, look, that brings the end to the lucky dip. Um, the next time we we will record some stuff next week for your musical and you know musical, for your listening pleasure while we're while we're taking a bit of a gap. Um, I don't know what yet. I guess we'll decide when when we click stop on the on this, and we end up having a conversation about it. But season six will will be recording when we get back off off holiday. We are going to open up with, and there's people at home won't be able to see, but I will tell you what it is. But the people there will be open up with 3D version of Jaws three uh, for a sequel. Uh, that'll be the opener, and who knows where we go from there? We can pretty much do anything. So. Before I ask everybody if they've got thoughts, of one one film that they've got that they absolutely would lo- love to do with a bit of thinking time, um, I'd like to open it up to our lovely listeners. It's season six. It's sequels. Tell us what you would like. Get in contact on YouTube. We have an email address, do, do we not, Amanda? Which we is... do. RustedJPod at gmail.com. Wonderful. For however you would like to get in touch with us, if there's something that's really special and you'd like it, like us to cover it, then fire away because I think season six will be with us for a while because we'll be we'll just keep coming up with some really good ideas, not not just the ones that that are you know that that I've got in my head that that may clash, but all three of you, I'm going to ask the same question: a sequel film that you that you'd like to cover? Excuse me. I'll be honest with you, I was just thinking uh, since it's the 80s and it's a sequel and I'm a big comic book guy, I would go with Superman 3. Oof. Okay. Because, yeah. you know, it, it gets a lot of heat, but Christopher Reeve is really good in that. It's really uh, good. Yeah. Is yeah, that yeah. the one where the baddies are trapped in that kind of pane of glass? Is that that one? <laughs> That's one uh, and two, but not three. Oh. Yeah. Richard Pryor is yeah, Richard kind Pryor, of the, yeah. kind of the villain in it. Robert Ford is the main villain with uh, I said to kill Superman and he couldn't do that one simple thing. Yeah, yeah, good, nice one, Dom. Still um, got his thinking cap on. I am. I'm just googling when googling. Come out. I, I said it. I know what I know what Dom's doing. He's googling British films. Because he's, he's dying to insert, he, he thinks we need to do more British films. No, he's Googling 80 sequels. <laughs> All right. I'm, doing, I'm just checking whether the film I'm about to embarrass myself by announcing was 80s or 90s, because I sometimes do get uh, mixed up. I, I, I need to go away and think about it properly. We're you know here to help. It, We're here you, to help. You know, you know how long it took me to come up with um, with my lucky dip, Charlie? We must have had four or five back and forth <laughs> whilst you 
Uh, although confusingly called lucky dip, um, there was certain boundaries which which I was forced to. <laughs> I operate. know. Well, certain oh, red okay. lines and vetoes which were issued. As did Joe. He couldn't have Top Gun, but in retrospect, we probably should have done Top Gun. But okay. But I'm glad oh. we did Full Metal Jacket. Look, you get. I think you get the film that we all universally like the most. I think Predator wins. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, at the moment, I can't offer anything more adventurous or, or insightful than, than Indiana Jones because I've got a feeling. Mm. I remember Temple of Doom being better than Lost Ark and uh, I've come out and said it, so I'd like to maybe put that <sighs> to the test, but I'm sure I can do better with a bit longer to think about the question. Is that uh, the one where they eat the monkey brains? Yeah. yeah. Killed monkey mm. brains. You know, I, I'll say, Don, back when I had seen it, I felt the same way because it was much more adventure than Raiders of the Lost Ark. But, you know, as you get older and you view them again, it's like, mm, yeah. I was a kid back then. You know, Is that the one, Dom, is this the one with the rolling ball? That's the first one. Oh, that, yeah, that's, oh, that's it, the huh? original. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love your uh, your references to it. So there's a big ball, and he drops his hat. Is that the is that the third one? Or is that the first? But you should do like a quiz show, <laughs> yeah. you know, like which one's with the Amanda one snake pit? <laughs> All of like them. Uh, weirdly, is there's there's one in there's a snake pit in three in uh, the Last Crusade because River Phoenix falls into it. Does that count? That counts the snake pit. You've got the snake pit in one. I'm not sure there is in, in Temple of Doom. We don't talk about the Crystal Skull. Oh, God, no. That's a terrible movie. This is a movie that has a ghost with hot dogs in its mouth. Amanda. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey? That's how you would okay. do a quiz like that. You yeah, know? yeah. Go on, then. Go on, well, answer, answer that one. What's what? It's a movie that's got a ghost with hot dogs in its mouth. Oh, uh, mm. just before the radio kicks in with a yeah. uh, with a public service uh, announcement, we've ghost not gone off there. Busters? I repeat. There you go. There yeah. you go. Oh, the ghost. That was pretty easy. Oh, That's this not th a sequel. Th this could wait a minute. This could become a, the next little does she know. Yeah. This is great. Hey, another, another sequel we could think about <laughs> would be um, Lethal Weapon Two. I was going to say Weapon. that. Yeah, yeah. See, I thought that was. I thought that might have been oh. your choice. But you've referenced Lethal Weapon 2 a few times as well, haven't you? Sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm and what else, I what else can we do? Uh, on the similar vein, we'll have to do... Beverly Hills Cop 2. Yeah. 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 They're the two, they were the two on my list. See, already we've got six films. <laughs> I mean, there's only ever in a season we put in about 12 or 13. We're just going to keep running with this one. So please send your suggestions in. You've heard what, what you know we're all going to do. Um, I feel out of that that Jaws... Jaws 3 still, well, it's going to be, it is what it is. No, Jaws it's, 3. It is, yep. Did you it, see Jaws 3, Amanda? No. Oh, I saw Jaws 3, right, okay. Did you, did you see Jaws 2? Probably not. Wait, why don't you let her watch Jaws 2? You've seen Jaws though, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. oh, yeah. Plenty of times now. See, see it in order, although I guess you don't have to, but. Okay, I, we, we do Jaws 2 the week before we do Jaws 3. How about that? I, Thanks for that, Joe. And, You're welcome. And, and Joe, I would I wouldn't put her through watching Jaws of Revenge. I wouldn't do that no. to my worst enemy. Jaws two one... was, was was pretty good. Though. Jaws two I, I was all right. It's okay. Yeah. Which yes. is the one that paid for Michael Caine's new house? That's that was Jaws Jaws. Well, Jaws four or Jaws the Revenge. Four. Yeah. Okay. My yeah. internet's gone slow. Okay. Well, we can still hear you. And we can all still right, then. sort of see you, even though you look like a late nineties webcam. But it's fine. It's okay. Cheers. We're all, right. We're all right. Love you too. You're next to the router. <laughs> you're uh, you're down there. But anyway, right. That brings us to the end, Lucky Dip. We will produce some content. We don't know what it's going to be, but I think we're going to sit down now and just have a brief conversation uh, about it and then come up with something. So the next time you hear from us, it's whatever we've just talked about and decided. So we look forward to it and we'll see you then. See you later, everyone. All right. Sign yeah, off. Toodle pip. Bye. Bye. Yeah.